probably most of you don't know who this man is. He founded platforms used by over 1,000 people worldwide. For years, he has battled censorship and governments, and he is currently under investigation in France. If the accusations are confirmed, he faces a sentence of up to 20 years. This is the short story of Pavel Durov, the rebellious genius of the internet. Pavel Durov was born on October 10, 1984, in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, in a family of intellectuals. Pavel spent part of his childhood in Italy, specifically in Turin, where his father worked as a guest professor at the university. In fact, the first computer on which Pavel and his brother Valeri started programming was bought in Italy. So we could say Pavel Durov is partly an Italian pride. While studying at St. Petersburg State University, he created discussion forums for university students, such as AGCOM and SPB, which became popular almost immediately. After the success of these forums, he started developing a vision of free and unrestricted communication. In 2006, Pavel founded vContact, today simply VK, the platform that later became the most important social network in Russia and neighboring countries. It was a sort of Russian Facebook, as in the beginning, the interface was practically identical and the functionalities were quite similar. However, from the start, Pavel wanted VK to be a platform allowing free communication without third-party interference. This is where his first conflicts with power begin. Russian authorities started asking for user information, but Pavel resisted. He didn't want his dream of free communication, his ideals, to be controlled by the government. In 2012, Durov made a gesture that attracted everyone's attention. He threw paper airplanes made of 5,000 ruble banknotes from his office window in the Singer House in St. Petersburg, together with the platform's vice president. When the police arrived, there was a crowd, and so on. A total scandal. Some saw it as an act of arrogance, which it was initially perceived as. However, as the vice president later explained, they were simply in the office and said that money means nothing to them. Pavel then said, let's make these airplanes and throw them out of the window. That's all there was to it. However, airplanes made not of banknotes, but of plain paper are still seen today. The biggest scandal came in 2013 when Durov was accused of running over a policeman while driving his white Mercedes. According to reports, Durov allegedly ran over the policeman's feet while they were trying to stop him. He didn't want to get out of the car as he was near his office. At some point, a guard from the office came out and started blocking the police. While the guard was doing this, Durov got out of the car and escaped into the office. Although Durov denied everything, this obviously became a huge scandal. This event marked the beginning of a large-scale campaign against him. After these scandals, searches began. It was during these searches at his house that he thought he needed a secure way to communicate with his brother. After realizing that he could no longer stay in Russia, he left the country, sold his stake in VK at a low price, and founded Telegram. For Durov, Telegram was not just an online messaging app, but a symbol of his fight for privacy. Telegram is built on the encryption system called MT Proto, developed entirely by Pavel's brother. Although his brother was never a public figure, in fact, quite the opposite, he has always supported Pavel in all his ventures. What later made Telegram special was Pavel's vision. He never bowed to government requests to access user data. This was evident during the Ukrainian Euromaidan protests when Durov refused to provide the Russian authorities with information about the protest organizers. Or when he was in America for a conference and was approached by the FBI, who asked him for the encryption keys to read certain conversations. Whenever I would go to the US, I would have uh, two FBI agents greeting me at the airport, asking questions. One time I was uh, uh, having my breakfast at like 9 a.m. and uh, uh, the FBI showed up at my house that I was renting. And uh, that was quite surprising. And I thought, you know, we're getting too much attention here. Telegram quickly became a crucial tool for activists, journalists, and citizens who wanted their communications to remain private and uncontrolled by any authority. In 2018, the Russian government decided to block Telegram after Pavel refused to hand over the encryption keys. Roskomnadzor, 
the Russian Internet Control and Surveillance Agency, started blocking IP addresses in an attempt to make Telegram inaccessible. This desire of the Russian government to block Telegram led to protests and demonstrations across Russia. At one point, people symbolically launched paper airplanes, the symbol of Telegram, in a show of resistance. However, this led to sanitation workers losing their patience with Telegram. Despite the government's attempts, Telegram continued to grow, and in 2020, Russia was forced to back down and completely unblock the app. Durov won his battle, but the war for digital privacy is still far from over. During this period, Telegram was always a completely free app. No ads, no paid features. It was funded entirely by Pavel, but he couldn't finance an app used by hundreds of millions of users forever. So, in 2021, the company raised $1 billion through bond issuance, ensuring its financial stability for at least a few more years. Before I get into the latest events, I want to talk a bit about Pavel's character, because, obviously, the way he's perceived abroad is not how he's perceived in Russia. Pavel has given very few interviews throughout his career, almost none. Over the years, his only way of communicating has been Telegram, of course, and occasionally he would post on Instagram. There, we could see his transformation from a nerdy, almost bald 20-something to a muscular figure. Pavel's image is directly inspired by Neo from The Matrix. For many years, he has worn only black without any logos. He doesn't drink alcohol, coffee, or smoke. He has no vices. Anyway, let's move on. On August 23, 2024, Pavel Durov, accompanied by a woman, landed with his private jet in Paris, where he was met by law enforcement. He was arrested in France on charges related to the management of Telegram and the use of the platform for criminal activities like drug trafficking and NSFW material. French authorities claim that Durov didn't do enough to prevent these abuses, criminal uses of his platform, and so on. Accusations he, of course, denies. There is speculation that this was a carefully organized arrest, as after the arrest, his companion disappeared. It is rumored that she was a Mossad agent who was assigned to track his movements and help capture him when he arrived in France. Besides his Russian passport, Durov also holds French, St. Kitts, and U.S. passports. He is one of the few people in the world to have received a Hawaiian passport. After the arrest, several world leaders, including Elon Musk and other tech CEOs, expressed their support for Pavel. It's the first time in the world that a CEO of a platform is being held responsible for the actions that take place on it. It's unimaginable. A few days later, Durov was released from prison after paying a bail of $5.5 million. The conditions stipulate that he cannot leave France until the investigations are concluded, and he must report to the authorities every two days. If the charges against him are confirmed, he could face up to 20 years in prison. After the recording of this video, some updates have emerged, not many. 